All right, we back. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but the internet seems to be attempt to pump me. I don't know what's going on, but me and Whiskey Charlie, we gonna get it figured out, no doubt. We gonna keep on making Thanks, Arch, there. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me, brother? Thanks, Arch. Yeah, can you hear me? Thumbs up if you can hear me, because I can hear you. It's fucking terrorist. Fucking terrorist that's what's doing it. I don't know what's going on today, man. My yeah, inter- fucking Al Qaeda. My internet is okay. Hey, man, this is what we're going through. Computers glitching, they do what they do. Whiskey Charlie. Tell you, it could be mine. Hold up a second here. He has something that he wanted to bring to you about what your volunteer service looked like. I don't know if you heard him earlier today, but he said he's going over to the Louisiana way and help out a Home Depot store to deal with Hurricane Ida. Whoo, 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 whoo. I know I'm yawning like I'm ready to go nighter, nighter. Yes, I'm probably am because it's been a very busy weekend for me, for Big Sarge. Yes, indeed. Whiskey Charlie, where I, you at? I think I fixed it. I think I fixed it. I think you did. I hope you did. I think uh, you did. That means it's going to be an amazing show, man. Anytime we have those type of interruptions, that means it's going to be an amazing show. So you know how that go. I, w- I went into... Uh, X that on the uh, pornographic websites. Man, thank you very much. I don't, I don't need your porn smut jumping through to my computer, uh, jacking up my my mainframe, and then Miss Smith over here going insane. Okay. Okay, I remember. So what that, what that felt like to you today to have a day off, brother? Take a day off and relax and enjoy with the family. I mean, it was definitely different. Uh, definitely different. Uh, took my wife telling me to uh, to uh, sit down in in one spot and stay there, pretty much. It's amazing how our wives have to give us those uh those directions to to sit down and take a break because I think I've been moving all weekend. And my wife just came over and was talking to me not too long ago before we started the show. You need that. You need that. That that good support in your life to help you get it right when you're running around and you're doing too much, and they want to keep you through the night. You know, they want to make sure you're okay. Exactly. Yeah. Now I feel you on that one. Uh, you, you, cause I already had like three or four other things planned out for today. I mean, out, outside of doing what I usually do. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to actually, uh, uh, start moving or her, uh, her uncle gave her a, a 73 models bug. A 73 model bug for your wife. Your, her uncle gave her. No, gave it to uh Siley. Oh wow. So you working on it to get it prepared for her from for, for 12, 13 years from now? Yeah, yeah. I got uh actually have uh you know twelve years to get it get it done, you know. So I want to go ahead and start now and start uh figuring things out and do a piece by piece uh type situation. So I've been watching a lot of shows on rebuilding cars and then I've uh, of course I got a lot of family members that are close by here that the I don't know how to do it and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it's something that uh, takes your mind off a whole lot of things, you know. I think yeah. that's the whole reason why me staying busy and doing what I do. I finished off my back porch this morning, so. Man, and then yesterday, uh, tractor, love it out my yard. Nice. That's pretty cool. That's all right there. I uh I didn't go back out to Home Depot today, but I do got those brick pavers, and I'm going to go pick up some more tomorrow so I can go ahead and pave out the yard and set up this dog pen area because they just digging their way to China. I got these husk, they, they mutts, you know, mixed breeds, but I love them because they husky, boxer, pit bull, you know, the dad's 100 
purebred boxer. The mom was husky pit bull. That's an interesting combination right there in itself. But hey, I guess if you got to get it in, you got to get it in, right? So anyhow, get it um, in, son. The huskies they like to dig, especially when they get bored. So they like to dig, and I feel like they've been digging their way to China in my backyard. So me and the wife had talked about putting up a pen. So I start going to get some uh, topsoil, some dirt, and some of the bricks. So I'm getting ready to pave it. And I was just talking to my neighbor, and they was telling me they would, uh, they know something, a, a good deal on a chain link, a chain link kennel. So they're going to let me know about that. <laughs> Excuse me, man. It's, it's just been one of those weekends. Big Sar's been working, getting it in. So anyhow. Grunt speak. Speak grunt. Buy grunts, fuck grunts. And I know earlier when you reached out to me, Whiskey Charlie, and we was talking about what to do on this show and how we would go, you were talking about volunteer services. You know what I'm saying? Um, volunteer services and goals and the goals that we set and kind of just freestyling for a little while and letting us have a little bit of fun with this thing. So I got pretty interesting things that I want to talk touch on too. But before I get into that, I'm going to say this to you. One minute win, one minute war. Yesterday it rained like cats and dogs out here. So I was worn with the fact that the dogs was barking and going crazy. I was sitting down enjoying my dinner. I figured they would be fine. They had a little kennel out there. All they had to do was go outside. But I'll be honest with you, man. My lovely Caucasian neighbors who probably love animals in a different way than I do. They came out their house in the monsoon of a rain just to tell me that the dogs was having it rough out there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, there is, I'm going to let you know, there is some uh, some Caucasians out there like that for damn sure. <laughs> uh, my wife is probably one of those uh, because I, to the simple fact that, uh, to me, I believe I can leave the dogs outside and won't hurt them at all. Because uh, they're dogs, they've got fur, they've got the things that they need to take care of themselves outside that. I got a, I got a front porch that's sixty feet in length. I got a back porch that's almost thirty feet in length. Is covered, and it ha both have fans on them. There's no, no, fuck that. I've been put in <laughs> worse situations in infantry than them fucking dogs are right now, man. Fuck that. Like dogs get treated better than infantry men out there, man. Get hey. The Thank you, man. That's all I was saying to my wife yesterday. But when the doorbell rung, I'm like, who at my house? Nobody ever come through and there's one of the few blacks, one of the only blacks on my block. They come yeah. ringing your doorbell about dogs. You know you don't want to be that guy that looked like he just <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. But, yeah. <clears throat> I was the same way, man. Like, yo, they, they dogs, man. If I turn the loose... If I cut the leash on them and I let them go, they're going to survive. You know what I'm saying? We've gotten to a point in the world where, and I ain't knocking the animals for all the animal lovers out there. You know what I'm saying? I, I do have love for them, but coming from a place for sincerity and seriousness and also humor, you know what I'm saying? Like, they dogs, man. If you cut the collar, they're going to survive. They're going to be all right. They're going to do better than my kids would do. Because their instincts yeah. going to kick in. They're going to know exactly what to do. They're not like humans. They don't think through and worry about what people are thinking about them, all that other stuff. They they are the using the, the basic tools that they have in life in order to get it right. I know I got to hit the bathroom. I know I got to get me something to eat. And if I can find something to hump on when it's in heat, that's what my boy dog going to do. You know what I'm saying? So it was pretty interesting. So anyhow, my... uh. My war was the dogs barking and going crazy like the rain was killing them. But my win was my my neighbor talking to my neighbor today. And, and you know, we're having a long conversation today about something else. And I'm thinking to myself, cool, he ain't even bring up the dog. So we sweet. But before, <laughs> I, bro <laughs> yeah. but before I broke contact, he brought up the dogs on me. <laughs> he was like, I don't mean to be forward or anything, but, you know, your dogs and... I'm like, no, you're cool. You could be 40. He was like, if you want to, uh, I know somebody with a chain link shelter or fence because I'm in the process of building a pen before I get one. And he was like, I can probably get it for a good deal if that'll help you. I'm like, yeah, you got a good deal then. That'll be sweet. So the hey, win was. Sure, hey, hey, make sure it's a, it's a good price because uh, Home Depot does carry them at the store. Okay, I sweet. Know. 
and we we sell a shit ton of them, and people are uh, people really seem to enjoy uh, enjoy the ones we have in the store. So definitely something you peek in peek in on. If he, if you think he's, I think it's uh, if it's anywhere above two hundred dollars, dude, I wouldn't do it. They want the okay. home for the brand new that comes for like two hundred. All right, cool. So I like that sweet. You know, you still got people that care, but then he said something to me. He was like, "I uh, I'm not. You know, I know who you are, and I know that." If you had an opportunity to bring them in the house when you could, you would. So it's not a big deal. And I'm just like, man, we talking about dogs. I, I ride past homeless people less than 30, less than three miles from my house. And I stay in the yeah. suburbs. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, man, come on now. Hey, you got to look at him and say, hey, I, I've been putting in worse conditions. Those dogs will be all right. Yeah. And he know it. He know I'm hey. infantry. We had hey. those conversations. He was in the Air Force, though. Oh well, come on now. Uh, <laughs> no, no it, he's a. My neighbors are good people. He's really a good guy, so he understands that. And he has dogs himself. But you know, for a lot of people, your pets are like your kids. I just think sometimes we get to a point where we put the pets before actually human beings. I think about that every time I'm walking through the neighborhood. My dog take a shit, and I'm bending down picking up his shit. He not picking up mine. Like, <laughs> right, exactly like the luxury. Hey, they don't know nothing about the old uh, for a hood incident, you know? For a hood, you know, rain coming down sideways. We still out in the field training. So it's like who's training who? But anyhow. So that was the one minute win, one minute war for me. My dog's barking and going crazy over a little bit rain, but I was still able to maintain my composure and my neighbors understood that I wasn't just some uh, animal, animal hater Crazy. dipshit, you know what I'm saying? The dude that's got the dogs chained up and starving them or letting them bake in the sun or nothing like that. He's like, no, nah, I ain't never had a problem with you and your dog. So it's like, it's cool that people see that you take care of and do what you need to do, but... You know, yeah. you got a win or a war for you, Whiskey Charlie? Uh, let's see here. My shit. God, I got <laughs> a challenge here. I had something in mind and it just went to shit. But, uh, man, I, I would say just uh, my war this week would, it would be just to uh, stop paying so much attention to the uh, – so much attention to the news. Yeah, it, like, it gets to me at times and listening to some bullshit. So – uh, uh, and my, of course, my win is, of course, me just trying to bring back focus on what's priority to me, uh, and, and me just focusing it on, uh, my family, and my life. So I would say that was the biggest, uh, uh, a, uh, win for me. The war would be, uh, don't listen so much to the TV because it, you know, all I can, all I can do is talk about it is negative shit on there. So. That's my biggest thing. If they can actually get down there and talk about something positive for once, I know there's some positive things going on in this world. Yeah, I had a uh, buddy of mine come by the house the other day, and I ain't going to even lie to you. I think I got a 32-inch TV in my living room. And he was like, man, it's like his second time being over at the house, but the first time ever really coming through the house. And he's like, man, this is a nice house. It's real beautiful with everything. He's like, only thing you need to do now is get a bigger TV. I was like, for what? Don't nobody in my house watch TV. I'm not going to buy no big TV just to appease everybody else. I'm like, I don't even, I don't watch TV. I pass by that thing. It's just like another computer screen. Like between work and working with my kids and working with my father, I'm like, I don't watch TV. So I'm not going to spend that money on a huge TV screen. No, no knock to nobody else and whoever do what they do, but the more I watch TV, the, 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 the more you watch TV, the less you find you. It's a television for a reason. You watching somebody else's life and it's acting and actors and actresses and your life is a real thing that you're not watching so much or paying attention to. So I'm like, I want a big library. I don't want a big TV. I want, I want to have more space where I have books and things that I'm reading that I'm learning and I want a TV. But Sometimes it is good to sit down and watch the idiot box, as I like to call it, to kind of disconnect and decompress for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like uh, I, do, I don't do a whole lot of watching. Of course, y'all hear me about what I do. I, I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that always. I mean, 
if I if I'm actually sitting down and watching TV, that just means that uh, I've either uh, exhausted myself or to a point that uh, uh, nothing else is going on, or I'm k- trying to keep myself from uh, waking up the uh, kids uh, while they're uh, taking their naps or whatever else. So yeah, my my TV's uh, that's the same thing that I get. Uh, a lot of my people at uh, work, whatever else, or people I know, it's like, hey, why don't you jump on Xbox? My big old, my Xbox is a big old giant Netflix player at times, so I don't ever get on that thing. I mean, maybe once every two, three months, or maybe, yeah, so, sometimes yeah. it's a strange moment, and I get on there like twice, two or three times. But outside of that, I, I don't see any need to actually be on there every day. I'd rather, uh, like I said, I'd rather be, my hands are idle hands, you know what I'm saying? So it's always good to be on something, working on something, doing something. Yeah, man, because, uh, I mean, I lo- that's the things I love to do, like whether it's woodwork and, you know, mechanical work, something, something tinker on something, but I'm always willing to learn and, and uh, of course, and adapting because trades are becoming uh, a lot less these days. And uh, kids, uh, I think that's one of the biggest things that need to be taught outside of uh, outside of uh, learning how uh, to take care of your credit and stuff like that. I think uh, a trade trade class, trade school should be a requirement, though, too. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. I think learning how to understand finances and credit should be number one. But the man want to keep you broke, not just financially, but broken in the mind. They don't teach you about money because they don't want you to understand money. You know, they make you believe or feel like as long as you got plenty of credit cards and a great credit score that you win it. But that doesn't mean that you necessarily win. it. it just means that you have the ability to pay some bills on times. But if you don't know how to manage the money that you have, if your man, if your money's not working for you, as Warren Buffett would say, while you sleeping, then you're going to be working to the day that you sleeping for good. You know what I'm saying? So you honestly, you definitely need to uh, learn finances and you need to get back to a skilled trade because you can go to school, be a carpenter, be a plumber, be an electrician, be a pipe fitter, be a welder, and you can come out making twice the amount of money that somebody coming out of college is going to make without all the debt that you're going to have after a four-year degree. So, yep. you know, yep. hey, big man. sorry you're saying it. I think that it's strategically planned by the big man that they want to keep everybody down so you don't see what's really going on. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no, no, that's for sure. Like, Hey man, uh, one of the biggest things is people don't realize is if if you're trying to find a job or you're trying to even open your own business, uh, open your own business is pretty hard. But you also gotta find something if you're trying to figure out what you're gonna do. Find something that nobody likes doing. That's a job you want. You you try to find something that you like, you're interested in, but also something that somebody never likes doing. Like whenever you see people out here with great jobs, I mean, you think about landscapers and people that mow grass. Dude, there's people out there that hate mowing grass. But I'm telling you what, I know some people that, that clear almost six figures just mowing grass. Just yeah. mowing grass. You know, and yeah. then that's something that it, it's not because nobody can't do it. It's because they're, I don't want to say lazy. Some people just rather have, rather they make enough money, they rather just pay somebody to do it, right? Same thing with any other type of, you know, any type of things that go along that line. I mean, Detailing cars. I've seen some people make some good money off of detailing cars. Nobody likes going out there and rinsing off their car or detailing the inside. You got to find something that's, uh, and if you want to make it successful, you got to find something that nobody wants to do. You find that job that nobody wants to do, and you can make yourself some killer ass fucking money. That's right, Tim. That's 100% correct. If you love what you do, it isn't work. It's like I tell people I never want to retire. What is that? It's not even a real thing. Most people retired and they die a few years later. Like I discovered that speaking and speaking life into someone else's life and encouraging people to be the best version of themselves and take your, hold yourself accountable for where you at and where you say you want to be. And that's a lot of things that people don't want to hear too. Speaking inspiration to people. Everybody don't want to do that. Everybody don't want to hear that. Everybody don't have the gift to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's a small percentage of people who want to have someone speak into their life about moving forward in life because we've been almost taught to count on somebody else to do stuff for us. So yeah, man, if you, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life and you can do it to the end of your life. I mean, Warren Buffett is like 87, 88. He's still doing uh, stocks and buying businesses and things like that. So say what you want to say. Oh man, check this out. 
doing what you love. I met a gentleman yesterday. I had a pleasure to meet a gentleman yesterday. Shout out to Mr. Tucker. He was from the 199th Infantry Division in Vietnam. Um, I did a favor for a friend. And wow, this goes kind of in our topic. You talked about volunteering and going to help people out. And that's what we are going to get into a little bit for a few minutes as we kind of transition to have some fun. And uh, you're talking about volunteering and helping people out. I won't say if it was a volunteer, but it was because of a close friend of mine who's like a mother figure to me at my Toastmasters group owns a business called Downsize My Homes to where she helped elderly couples who's moving to a different place get rid of things and downsize, you know? So she asked me yesterday, a couple of days ago, um, I was talking to her, telling her everything would be all right. And she was just saying, I got so much business going on right now. It's a good thing, but I don't have the people to do the job. I'm like, well, you know, I'm free on the weekend sometimes. You know, I move furniture for years. Not that I want to, but I'll help you because it's you. You know what I'm saying? And so she's like, oh, okay, great. She sent me a text message and asked me would I go help this uh, couple in Sun City, Texas. And I went out there and I was really just moving some boxes around and moving some furniture and things like that. But I got to talk to Mr. Tucker, man. And it was probably one of the best conversations that I had in a very long time. This gentleman was 77 years old and I was out there to help them and do some work, but he was still slanging boxes around. Like, you know, he hadn't missed the beat. You know what I'm saying? It was just so interesting. He like, man, I thank you for just coming out here and helping us. And it made me feel so good just to be volunteering to do something for somebody else. It reminded me when I was back in Michigan and I was working with uh, the veterans program called Buddy to Buddy, helping veterans get their benefits and understanding how the VA work a little bit. And it's something it's something special about taking time out of your day and giving back to somebody else's day and pouring in somebody's life you know, to do things that you wouldn't normally do. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely, definitely do. Like, hey, I do a lot of uh, volunteer or not even just volunteer. It's just uh, go out there and uh, help a, a family member, help a uh, friend, you know, whether it's, you know, letting somebody borrow your vehicle to go get some things, whether it's, you know, uh, I, I got coming up here soon. I volunteered to uh, go and assist with this after this hurricane. I, I plan on going to Louisiana and uh, helping out the uh, fellow uh, Home Depot over there. You know, associates get affected too. So go there and just uh, help out, you know, still control things and help uh, help uh, them drive positivity in them over there. So, uh, so you know, it's, it's always some, some good things going on. But uh, that's one of the biggest things that, you know, kind of got me uh, – Bring up the topic, of course, with the whole factor of, uh, you know, volunteering or doing a, some type of community event. I mean, we, we, we ultimately, when you first uh, signed up with the military, you made a, a commitment and you volunteered uh, to the community, to the United States to uh, do your part and uh, to help them out and, uh, you know, let them uh, have their freedom that they, uh, you know, so much enjoy. Um, my biggest question is what else, what else do you do? Not your back. What else type of volunteer, what type of community things do you try to keep that ball rolling so that you can still enjoy what you do or other people can enjoy the freedom that you are uh, assisted with them? That's pretty cool, man. I have to be, to be perfectly honest with you. I haven't been part of a, a consistent volunteer program since I've been back in Texas. You know, I've allowed life to get so busy for me, especially for me coming back into my family, even though we were separated and rebuilding that, <clears throat> those relationships and that partnership. But it, it's still for me as an individual is something that I need to do because volunteering pours back into you. Now, I haven't done it where it was like an organization, you know, home habitat for humanity or the uh, animal shelters or so many organizations out there, right? Yeah. I haven't done anything like that, but I'm always, if somebody at my church is moving, I'm always there. Like my church just had to relocate buildings and they're renting the space. So I make sure I get up early and I go up to the church and I help set up and I help break down. You know, it's like you said, let somebody use your car, let somebody, you know, who's going through tough times, come over to the house and get something to eat, like volunteering my time to help somebody else and just not looking after myself. But 
when I was doing that structured environment volunteering, like with the buddy to buddy program, I really was that, 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 that really moved me. You know what I'm saying? It, it helped me find inspiration and in knowing that it's something bigger than you and what you out here for It's something greater than you. And people need help all the time and just to give of your time. And I take that back. One time I took my family to a group that I was part of called uh, black men in business. When I was attending ACC, they had this volunteering thing where we're feet in the homeless. And I took my entire family with me and I don't know, we probably pulled out poor, we probably handed out maybe 30 to 50 lunches. Like we just kept going back, loading up our car, getting more and driving throughout Austin and just handing them out. So it's definitely uh, something that I will always do. I will get back into whether it's through an organization or if it's just me, like my wife, she does extreme coupon. And if you look right here next to me, this is one of her shelves, two of her shelves. You know what I'm saying? As we split the office and, we take the time, we take the time to figure out what community centers need things, what churches need things, what homeless shelters need things. And then I what's the name? I package it all up, you know, and I take it to them. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's so many ways that you can volunteer and just give back of your time to help somebody else. You just have to be willing to do it and put yourself out the way. Oh yeah. No, uh, I agree on that right there, Big Sarge. Uh, I, I would have to say that uh, I work for a great, uh, great company that uh, likes to give back, uh, especially to the community and things like that. So, and they they actually put me in charge of this certain role of a community captain. So that's one of the things nice. is I kind of seek out things. Uh, you know, partnered with, uh, you know, with Home Depot, of course, to go out and help out veterans. Like throughout the year, we help out veterans and stuff like that. But also besides that. I partner with the um, some of the old folks homes are in around here and see who needs like help getting maybe ramps built or, you know, so little updates on the outside of the house, you know, just kind of a welcoming back, especially if they uh, with COVID, you know, a lot of people being forced out of the, out of those homes that they're used to back into their old homes and uh, needing some upgrades. So, you know, exterior upgrades and little small things here and there and the, kind of helping out with that. Uh, but, uh, you know, what makes me really feel good is uh, my daughter uh, taking after me. Uh, she, all she wants to do is give. Uh, she'll come in and sh she'll want to, like, draw pictures and stuff like that, go out and give it to the neighbor kids because they're all sick. And then she wants to go give them food. And, you know, she, don't, she wants to do things like that. So, I mean, it, you know, seeing that type of impact that that makes, uh, you know, that your kids are starting to fall in behind and just wanting to give. And, yeah, yeah, she asked, but at the same time, she she's want now she's asking for things to be able to give. So, man, it makes you feel good when you have a situation like that, and, and your kids are starting to uh, see, uh, see those type of things. Uh, how how much better it feels, and it does. It feels amazing to be able to give back, not only just to the veterans uh, that we have out there, but to anybody and everybody. I mean, me and me and my couple couple of my coworkers went out there during like Thanksgiving and Christmas and handed out food. Uh, we had so much extra food left over from work and stuff like that. We just grabbed all the extra food and we went went out late at night and uh, it, I mean had to be 10, 11 o'clock at night and handed out food to to homeless, uh, handed out blankets, handed out things like that. So you know just you know it may seem small to us, but it's real big to them and you know you make a true truthful impact to some of them out there. Oh yeah, that's true, man. I think the most now that I'm thinking about it, you know, I. Uh... And I guess sometimes we look at volunteering, we look at it like it has to be some big spectacle, you know, and it doesn't. It's like you said, you know, the simplest things like one of the things that I enjoy most that I never thought I would do. I was volunteering at my daughter's school, you know, like fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. It was COVID. So I didn't get to go to the middle school like that. But <clears throat> For career day, I sent in an inspirational video, you know what I'm saying? And the kids loved it and the teacher was happy for it. But like fourth grade and fifth grade, I was up at the school like every Tuesday and Thursday and talking to the kids and working with the kids. And it was such a it was it was so it was so fulfilling, you know what I'm saying? Because oh, yeah. you know, being being to see those kids light up, oh, there's Mr. Smith, and you know, he's gonna help me with do this and help me do that. And like, you had kids come talk to you about problems that's going on at home because they feel comfortable and you somebody to listen, you know, somebody they could talk to. Like, that just does something to you. And even to this day, because I still live in that same 
neighborhood, if I'm at the local H-E-B or the Walmart, and if the kids with their parents and they see me, they get so excited, like, hey, Mr. Smith, and their parents is looking like, who in the hell is this black guy that my white daughter knows? <laughs> that's how they be looking. But they like, oh, that's Zaria's dad. You know, Mr. Smith, he volunteered at the school. And I've given them inspiration cards and all type of things like that. So just to give back of your time a little bit, man, it uh, it definitely makes a difference in somebody else's life. Oh, yeah, definitely yes, does. Indeed. Tim said... But, uh, uh, Tim said he has helped after many hurricanes. You don't always hear thank you, but uh, they mean it. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've ran into situations where I'm doing some volunteer work and you don't hear it, but at the same time, you know that they're uh, they're really thankful. Uh, you can tell by gestures and stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I would say uh, I, I've had the same situation happen before. But I've also had a situation where we're out there helping out some veterans and like that. And, you know, we got a lot of associates that may not know as much when it comes to home improvement, but they're out there just trying to do their best part. And uh, the uh, people that we're doing the work for is uh, critiques the hell out of you. And that, I can tell you that much. It'll bug the shit out of you. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're doing the work for them. But at the same time, the free labor, free work that uh, Home Depot is putting in, you gotta be appreciative of what what what's actually given being given to you. I mean, it may not Absolutely. be to detail what you want, but you gotta be appreciative. No, you do. And some people, you know that, and that's sometimes why people don't volunteer because you coming out and you giving of your time and you giving of your energy, your good energy, and you looking to be helpful. And then people act like it's not enough, and they want to pull more out of you, like you supposed to do this. You're like, no, I'm just here to help out. But I think uh, service to others is something that we all should do in some shape, form or fashion, because whether we want to admit it or not, somebody did service for us and gave service to us in some way to help us. You know what I'm saying? Get to where we at today. So, you know, I think that's pretty interesting. And, you know, I was thinking about significant events and I want a uh, quick moment of silence for the last time that I checked. I do believe it was the 12 Marines. You know, we had 12, 12 American soldiers lose their life with this fight that's going on in Afghanistan with the Taliban taking over. And I know we had countless more injured and just the American so the American citizens and maybe the foreign citizens who's looking to get back home with everything going on. I just want to make, uh, make sure I acknowledge that. And at the same time as I acknowledge that, I want to acknowledge my buddy, my brother, Stephen Ballant, um, his wife, as I say, sent a, a reminder on her Facebook earlier today, like this makes almost year 12, year 12 since he's been gone, you know, lost to suicide and things like that and the things that people deal with and that they go through. So quick moment of silence for those people and their families for everything that they go through. Amen. I think it's always important to recognize, you know, recognize them and recognize the families because you volunteered when you signed on the dotted line. You know, we don't have a draft anymore. You volunteered to protect life, limb and eyesight, all enemies, foreign and domestic. And sometimes when you get home, you're not protected anymore with the enemy in your mind. And, you know, volunteering to help somebody else usually help ourselves. So I want to make sure I give a shout out to those individuals, um, their families, and let them know they love. But what are you doing for volunteering? And, you know, I had another question as we kind of transition a little bit about a little bit from there. I was looking at what made you join the Army? Like, besides family, do you remember the tagline that was around or the slogan that was being used at the time that you joined the army. Like they've had a number of them. Be all you could be a army of one army strong. Like it's been a number of different ones. Do you remember the slogan that was floating around when you joined and how it spoke to you? <laughs> Hell no. But I remember hearing all three of those. So, uh, uh, I definitely can't say that I can remember the slogan uh, of exactly the detail on that piece. So, uh, well, no, you got me there. So, check this out. 
World War One. The slogan was, "I want you for I want you for us Army," and it had a picture of Uncle Sam. That was the slogan. And then from 1950 to 1971, the slogan was, "Choice, not chance." Modern Army Green. It was the slogan <laughs> to get people in. From 1971 to 1980, it was today's army wants to join you. I'm like, oh, okay, man, love Thursday started a long time ago. <laughs> That's what happened. You want to join That's me in what one happened. way, Uncle Sam? And then, um, the longest, the longest one running so far that I know of is the classic from 1980 to 2001, which was "Be All You Can Be." I remember that. Be all that you can be. Join the army and some other stuff like that. But they had that slogan. And then uh, from 2001, you got some whiskey, Charlie? I'll be back here for you. Okay. From 2001 to 2006, it was an army of one. And then uh, from 2006 to 2018, it was army strong. And 2018 to currently what's going on, it was warriors wanted. What's your warrior? I'm like, man, everybody has slogans in order to get you to pay attention or attract it to their brand, how they do things. And, you know, with Nike is just do it. You see that? Just do it. You automatically know it's Nike. And I don't remember anybody else's slogans right off back like that. But the one I had focused on today and I wanted to talk about it for a minute was the army of one. The army of one. and And... What that really, what that really means, or what it meant, and when you think about that, what does that say to you? An army of one. Drop your comments down in the chat, and we definitely gonna read it back to you. But from an army standpoint, the army of one was a. Short-lived recruiting slogan. It replaced the popular "Be All You Can Be" and was replaced in 2016 by the Army Strong. The reason for the replacement states Frank Lutz is that the slogan "Army of One" is contrary to the idea of teamwork. Contrary to the idea of teamwork, a army of one. <clears throat> But it made me think a little bit deeper. Although that's contrary to teamwork, being an army of one, you have to be an army of one. What do you do when it's just you, when you solo, when you all by yourself? We often talk about our battle buddy. We talk about battle aid, uh, buddy, buddy aid, but we also talk about self aid. And when I think about an army of one, if you are a true army, you should be preparing. You should be training your mind, your body, and your soul. When you are an army of one and you become a part of an army, a larger team, then it helps you to be more successful. And I know depending on the individual of the person or the way that they hear that slogan, the army of one, it can sound very selfish very narcissistic, but it can also sound very, <clears throat> it can sound like teamwork. It can sound like growing. It can sound like unity. And the way that I say that, because if you take care of your one individual self first, if you push your body to the furthest limit that you've ever pushed before to make you strong as you can be for you, then you'll help the team around you to slow. The, the quote is, Iron sharpens iron. So as one man sharpens another. If you don't sharpen yourself in your oneness, if you don't sharpen your mind in your oneness, if you don't sharpen your family in your one, well, if you don't sharpen yourself in your oneness, how can you sharpen your family? 
How can you sharpen a team? You could be the weakest link. Bye bye. Y'all remember that show? So when I think about <clears throat> the army of one, sometimes in life, you 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 find yourself alone, completely doing it all by yourself. Land nav was a course where you had to do by yourself. The PT test was an event that you had to do by yourself. Now, other people were out there, but you are one individual attacking, attacking an obstacle, attacking a goal, or attacking an uh, opportunity that was put before you. Now, granted, you need to be strong, as the Army would say later, but if you didn't take and control your one mind, that you was going to be in problems a whole bunch of times. And that transitioned the same way in life, too. We are looking for so many people to do things for us that we won't do for ourselves. We are looking for so many people to take our greatest eternal wealth up off the shelf, but we won't do it ourselves. You have to be an army of one. You have to be in strong and knowing where you weak. You have to be able to speak up. You have to be able to speak out. You have to not have doubt, not have fear of yourself. Being an army mean that you're working at the highest level. To me, the highest level of your skill trade, the highest level of your physicality, the highest level of your mentality, the highest level emotionally. The Bible even says love others as we love thyself. That's loving yourself first. That's of one. And if you don't love yourself right, we can't love any other anybody else right. So being an army of one doesn't have to mean it always have to be a negative thing. It just depends on the context and the connotation. Come on, man. Drop it down in the chat. Tell me what you think about that. What slogan did you fall in under? And how do you feel about that slogan, an army of one? Do it raise selfishness in you? Do it raise deceit in you? Do it raise anger in you? Or does it call you to be a better version of you so you, the one individual, can strengthen the other individuals around you? I was an army of one when I was on my ruck, but I would share my energy with everybody else when I would get on my phone and go live. I could have kept this idea all to myself and attempted to do it on my own, but it wouldn't be as big as it's becoming, uh, as it's growing to be because I knew I needed somebody to help me. But before I asked for help, I had to take my one self and start to do what myself believed that I can do. Before you can ask anybody to come to your party and to help you, you got to step forward and be an army of one for yourself and do what you need to do. That's the only way we get through, my brothers and sisters. That's the only way we make it through. You could do all the 22 push-up challenges a day you want, but if we don't figure out how to get that soldier to speak their one mind, to share their one heart, then we will continue to be lost in the dark. And I'm not speaking negative me, because if you call my other page, it's Mr. Ping E, but I'm speaking reality. I'm speaking reality. We have to get the individual to believe in their greatest eternal wealth, to hold themselves accountable for the things that they say they want to do. Be an army of one and then become strong too. And then I guess you can be a warrior. I don't know if I'm the craziest about what's your warrior because then it just teaches murder, death, kill. And we know that the army ain't all about that. And the society that we live in with video game crazy and Call of Duty crazy, kids are literally going crazy because they want to be strong and figure out what type of war they are. But in an army of one, you responsible for your one individual self. And those who are intelligent enough to understand or those who are intelligent enough to choose to understand and not fight the plan, you know when you become intelligent for yourself, that is when the greatest eternal wealth comes off of the shelf. But we must be intelligent for ourselves. We must Take responsibility 
for our one selves in order to gain our greatest eternal wealth. And when we do that and we plant ourselves in the right area to get the right light, our roots run deep and it prepares everybody else for what they see. So that one individual has the opportunity to change the world that they see. So for me, an army of one should set you free. Because I ain't really digging to be strong just yet, but be strong in what? Be strong how? Because being strong in the army and being strong in the civilian world is two totally different things, if you know what I mean. I guess y'all just ain't going to talk to me today, but that's okay. I'm going to talk to you too, because this is what I'm called to do. It's just me. There's one individual, Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Big Sarge, larger than charge of my one and only self. You in charge of yourself, too. But you know you need to. You know what you need to do. You have to celebrate the glory in you. You have to celebrate your spouse. That's what you you have to celebrate your kids. That's what you you are the one individual who's going to help and bless the family in order to come through. But you got to get out there and do what you need to do. Yes, yes. I'm yawning on you. I'm yawning on you. I'm scratching my neck because this one army soldier has been on a tear this weekend. And it wasn't all me. Luckily, I had Zachary. When you become that army of one, you think about that in your life as your civilian job, because at your civilian job, you working on the one individual scale, even though you may have a team, the team are all getting the same collective raise. Even though you may have a team, the team is not all getting the same collective raise. Yep. I have helped after many hurricanes, you know. But anyhow, Whiskey Charlie have seen and left me, but being an army of one sets me free. It allowed me to just go extemporaneous -y. That's all. You have to choose which way you're going to go. Even when you're in a group of people, you still have an energy and a destiny and something for you to do that nobody else can do it like you do. I remember when a week or two ago, I felt like I was an army of one. I was all by myself after it boiled down to it. About a week ago, me and my buddy Z was at an airsoft event. And it was almost like capture the flag, but we had the radio equipment and they had to find out where we had it at. And we had a plan to set up and move every 10 minutes. Now there was a little creek bed on the back of this uh, Lowe's, right? So we running through and uh, we're, we're bounding, overwatching and, and moving around to our next uh, respawn point. But we got compromised during the time. So the one individual who had the box, we ensured ourselves to surround him, put him in a protective posture. So if they came that we would fight our way out. But we also learned and realized that they were slow to hesitate and we didn't want to give our position or ourself away. So we would begin to backtrack and run down a river and hide back. You know what I'm saying? But running down a river, it ran to just being me and my buddy Z to run with this radio and a hit and a radio set was, you know, away from me. So I said, okay, cool. We're going to do what we got to do. I'm going to start running on over to the tile and you pull out the uh, elevator. And that's what we had to do in order to find our way through to get back home. Cause Tim just happened to make that happen for us. I hope I got his name right. I ain't messed it up. So, slogans, army of one, be all you can be. Which one is this for you? An army of one, be all you can be, slogans.
So as I look down in the chat, I have no slogan love right back. I guess most people don't know which slogan they came in up under. But if you are interested, you can always Wikipedia that thing and it'll tell you exactly what you need to know, if you know what I mean. It's time to go home and relax and be by the wife and chill out, y'all. Yo, Whiskey Charlie, he's gone from me. And I feel like I'm getting more sleepy. I don't know if it's happening to y'all. I feel like I done took two or three cat naps while I'm waiting, but it is okay. When we got down there. I mean, Whiskey Charlie just left me today. I guess he said, my goal is to get Big Star started, see what he transitioned to. Yep, those goals was a nice topic, even though I brought this up. And we are about 40 minutes from home. And he said, yo, I'm going to cut it off earlier today. That 30 minutes, I'll be home anyway. So it sounds good to me, man. Kind of waiting to see who jumps back down in the chat, where they at with that, and then see where Whiskey Charlie may be at. And we're, there you go. We are talking about this Army volunteering flow, and we are talking about, you know, slogans that they had, and I was diving into the Army of One and saying how the Army got rid of that slogan because they didn't think that it provokes uh, teamwork, make the dream work, but I like to believe that that slogan is very true for me and for a ton of other people, too. You know, you have to love yourself more than you love anybody else. And that's one of the hardest things to do. But sometimes when you get those little side streets, you just throw your shorts on, your pants on, and it still slows you down. You don't get to do everything you need to do. You get up early, 
and you prepare for that individual who has a long ride, then you can work that out too. Yeah. And yeah, I never knew that that's the reason why they got rid of that army of one. I mean, I guess I could see where, I mean, teamwork makes dream work. It doesn't correlate with that. I guess, uh, I guess a lot of people's got a lot of time to sit there and think on uh, situations like that. I think, I think that's why I'm so, I guess, uh, I'm a, I'm a universal type person. So it, it doesn't really what a lot of the things that may bug other people doesn't bug me at all. It's because it's got a factor that I know that there's going to be so many differences out there that you, you're never going to come to a common ground. But as long as you respect me, I respect you and you respect what differences I have and I respect your differences. Hey man, it's, it's all going to be a good world. Uh, you know, good, good place to live. But, uh, I think there's too many people trying to tell the, each other of like how they should live or how they or what what uh, type of judgments they should go about doing. So I think that's a big opportunity with with everybody. Everybody instead of being so concerned on what other people uh, people's practices are or what the religions are or whatever else it is, you know, just focus in on you, focus in on your religion. Don't try to force it upon anybody else. Uh, you can speak about it. I mean, if they don't like it, then you know. You know, if you're the opposite person, just speak out about it. Like, hey, look, I'm not down for that, dude. Just, let's just move on to something else. But we can always still be friends, you know. We, we can – that's the way I feel about it. No, I agree. That makes 100%. When I think about the army of one, you got to take control of your one mind before you can be good to anybody else. If you're not good to yourself, how are you going to give counsel to anybody else? You know, it's like somebody said to me before, that's being hypocritical. Yep. And I've had times in my life where I've been hypocritical. I wasn't I was being more of an army of one for the worldly side than I was a spiritual side. You know, I've had times where I was down on my luck and you looking to go to church and you looking for coins in the pews just so you can put something in the collection plate. And then you see there's more in there. And then you're like, man, you go home for the bench, the uh, benches. And I'm switching. It's like. um being that army of one is like you go. I lost my train of thought, but anyhow, being that army of one, you have to be one with yourself first before you can be one with anybody else. You know what I'm yep. saying? You and gotta be mentally I, prepared. Huh? <laughs> you gotta be mentally prepared, man. You know, you yeah. gotta be mentally prepared that you know, especially since the you know that their whole thing is to say hey, you know. If one person if one person fucks up, everybody fucks up. Well, you can't be uniformity if you ain't if you ain't all squared away yourself. You know, if you ain't squared away, then the rest of everybody's getting fucked up. So ultimately, you've got to square yourself away before you uh, square anybody else away and make sure that you're doing the right things. You know, situations like that. Yep, that is very true. Yeah, man. So it was pretty interesting. And I think if you are an army of one and you can't be strong in yourself. And then you can lead everybody else and the people around you. And that's when you really get to your real warrior, as they say, you know, nowadays. An army of, uh, as they say nowadays, what is your warrior? What's your warrior? Well, my warrior would be being true to myself. That way I can learn how to help everyone else. But if I don't know who myself is, then I don't have nothing to give. Hey, next slogan needs to be do your fucking part. <laughs> Ooh, we might have to write that up and send it in. Or we just send do we your, just make that yeah. a show topic. Do your fucking part. Because although this is for grunts and we talk nice and sweet sometimes, the, the fact of the matter is you do have to do your part in order to survive the woes and the obstacles and the hurdles in life. You gotta yeah. do your part. It's just like being serving. If you had a battle buddy who wasn't doing their part, they was fucked up, you start wanting to be around them. You start calling them on their stuff because you know it can get the greater good of people killed or in grave danger or in trouble. So do your part. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, New England Patriots, uh, do your fucking job. Do your job. Yeah. Yeah, ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, you, everybody's got to do their one part to be able to make the team successful anyways, you know. Hey, us as infantry, man, we got to do our part. If we didn't do our part, you know, medics wouldn't have their jobs. Cooks wouldn't have their jobs. Mechanics wouldn't have their jobs. You know, so, yeah, man. Yeah, that's why That's why I say what I say. You know, you guys do, do your part, man. So on this wonderful edition of Grunt Speak, Speak Grunt, we kind of just had a fun and kind of jumped around from a few things, a couple of interesting topics. You know, where are you volunteer at and how do you volunteer? 
It doesn't have to be some big blown out thing where everybody sees your name. Maybe it's going next door to your neighbors during a pandemic and asking if it's something that they need. That was something that was big for my community doing snow vid guys with the trucks who are able to move around and get supplies for other people. So volunteering doesn't always have to be a part of a, a specific community, a big name branded community. You know, volunteering can be doing something that you enjoy and you're doing those things that nobody sees. I think it was a year or so ago I was um, passing out food to the homeless. I was no I'm notorious for giving spare change or money, just how it's moved in my spirit. But this particular day, since I'm the cook in the house, I was tired of throwing leftovers away. I'm like, you know, there's so many people out here homeless and I'm throwing leftovers away. I can just pack it up, add something to it and take it to them. And I done that and I probably did that for a few days. And one day, one of the guys from my Toastmasters group was like, Ethan, everything all right? I'm like, yeah, why you say that? Like, I see you walking down uh, 1431 or whatnot. I said, what was I doing? And what day was it? He was like, oh, such and such this day. What time was it? Oh, it was this time. What was I doing? Like, I don't know. You had some bags or something in your hand. I said, oh, yeah, I was going to feed the homeless. That's what I was doing. Really? You was by yourself? Yeah, I was by myself. I don't need nobody to help me do what I'm called to do. That's when the infantry yeah. come out. Then the homeless man is through. Yep. Yeah, no, I have uh, one of my neighbors down here. Her husband just passed away, so I'm I'm going to uh, reach out to her tomorrow and uh, see if she wants me to come in there and take care of her yard for her. You know, those type of things. You know, it's just l little small things, and, and it's not just because I'm, tr again, not trying to trying to do it publicly or whatever else. I'm just doing it just because it's the right thing to do. I mean, cause uh, I was raised to the point, uh, raised up better than that. And then also mentality is, is also is that if you were in a position and you couldn't mow your grass, whatever else, and you had a, a, a young neighbor that could go over and do it for you, you know, uh, you would do it too. So, you know, just, uh, you know, what, uh, I think my neighbor at the very end of the street, he came over and did some, a uh, while back, he done some tractor work in my yard for me. He goes, just pay it for it. You know, and that's just one of the things that you always can uh, take back with you is, you know, it doesn't have to be, you can call it volunteer time, call it whatever you want to, but, uh, you know, just pay it forward. You know, some, something's going to come back ultimately for you. Uh, somebody's going to come out there and help you out. Maybe it's your vehicle is down. Maybe it's something wrong with the house, something that you can't do. And uh, somebody's going to come out there and just with no problem, no, no questions asked and come out there and hit, uh, be able to help you out with that. So, you know, just pay it forward. That's it. Pay it for it. And that's what we doing tonight. And every night that we jump on here, we just paying it for what our contacts and our thoughts and ideas of going through the VA and experience that, you know, going through with buddies who haven't been and talking to them mm -hmm. and helping them out with that. Talking to individuals that jump on here who never heard of us. Like I could have kept this all to myself when I was walking and never sure my community world. But this is all something that God was ordained to do for us to make it through. So you got to be willing to say, yo, preacher, teacher, whoever, I need a little bit of help over here. Well, I hope this episode of Grunt Speak was something so unique for you where you came through. You had a little bit of fun, too. I know it wasn't as serious as most of our weeks, but sometimes you got to break up the monotony and just look at a few different things and see how it speaks to you and how it calls to you and how it pulls on you. But here's what you need to do. Set some goals for yourself. Believe in yourself and tell yourself, remind yourself, my greatest eternity is inside of me. It's not sitting up on the shelf. And then remove the bread and the potato chips. Mm. If you don't need it, send it to me. Okay. Yeah. Anyhow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do what you need to oh, do no. man, to help you and your family get through. That's it. I'm done. I'm through. We made it. Our hour or so or more, but uh, we made it. And I thank you, Tim, for tuning in. I thank you for Justin Wayne Sutton. No. <laughs> but I thank everyone who's tuned in and shared the show. It will be back on Sunday on our YouTube channel. So if, it's, if you missed anything, you can go back and watch and see how we've grown from day one to now. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful night. Whiskey Charlie, you got something? Hey, man. Uh, biggest thing is to kind of touch up on the subject that we kind of uh, got on here is uh, 
I ain't saying that you have to go out and do uh, an extra community thing like uh, Big Sarge was saying here. You don't have to go out there and uh, join up a group. Make your own group. Make your own thing. Uh, go out there and uh, touch somebody's life, man. Uh, volunteer your time. Volunteer your help. Maybe it's uh, speaking, as we do on, on our show here. Maybe it's uh, physical work. Uh, but uh, reach out there and touch somebody, and uh, it's, it's going to pay itself forward there for you. So keep your heads held high, you guys. Uh, Every single one of you has got some some uh, some type of talent that you can take out there and uh, help somebody with. So uh, I challenge you to go out there and uh, you know go out there and help someone and uh, and uh, be blessed. Hey man, we're, we're gonna do big things. Grunt speak, speak grunt. Hey, the last thing I have for you is no matter what others may think of you, it's okay for you to just be you. Go out there and be gr be great. Whoever you call it to be, whatever is spoken into your life, make sure you keep doing it right so your phone will work and you ain't got porn moaning on it in the middle of the night like Whiskey Charlie you might see. But uh, set yourself free. Use Facebook. All, all them big Facebook. girls on there, man. I'm telling you what, all them big girls. Just overloaded it all. <laughs> You'll figure out a way. I'm pretty sure you will. Well, this has been Grunt Speak by Grunts for Grunts. Everybody is welcome, but everybody cannot and will not be a member. 11B, 11 Charlie, Delta, uh, well, backpack for my laptop for Delta, whatever. But I don't think I need it right now. So y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. That's it. We done. That's all we got to say. Peace. Yeah.